Hello students, now we are going to see January 1st week 2023 general awareness. So, January 1st week means from which date to which date we are going to see the news? January 2 to Jan 8, 2023. So, from this date to this date we are going to see the general awareness news. After watching this video, after watching this video, I have given the quiz link in the description box, right? Don't forget to attend the quiz. It is a timer based quiz. This quiz duration is for 30 minutes. You have to attend 40 questions. So once you have completing, uh, completed watching this video, straight away go to the uh, link in the description box and attend the quiz. So that makes you to evaluate your performance, right? Okay, right. One more, if you want to download the PDF also, I have given the link in the description box. You can download the PDF also, right? Okay, let us begin. With no further delay, let us begin. So as usual, as usual every week, Gen uh, every week general awareness we will be covering the news under this uh, 20 topics what are those topics hot news of the week national affairs states in the news international affairs books and others appointments defense news acquisition news summits news sports news important days obituaries schemes and committees environment and miscellaneous news suppose if we could not complete any news under this 19 topics that news will be covered under this 20th topic that is miscellaneous news right so totally from these 20 topics only we are going to see the news. So first let us begin. Hot news of the week. Uh, this week's hot news. What was that news? First news is 17th Pravasi Bharatiya Samman Award 2023 announced. Yes. Indian government has announced the 17th Pravasi Bharatiya Samman Award. So what is meant by Pravasi Bharatiya Divas? Pravasi Bharatiya Divas. What is meant by that? Actually Pravasi Bharatiya Divas is celebrated every year on January 9, January 9, every year this day is celebrated as Pravasi Bharatiya Divas. So, what is meant by Pravasi Bharatiya is Indians who are living overseas, Indians who are living in foreign countries. They have, they would be ma making some achievements, right? So, to honor them, we are giving awards every year, every year we are giving awards. That is from 2003, from 2003 only we have started to give the award. From 2003 to 2015, every year we are giving this award. Every year we are celebrating Pravasi Bharati Divas Day, as well as on that same day we are giving the award also, right? But from the year 2015, after 2015, two years once only this award is given. Before that, every year this award is given. Every year this award session is uh, award ceremony is done. After 2015, two years once only this award uh, ceremony is done. Okay, right? So, this year 17th uh, Pravasi Bharatiya Saman Award is given. This award, what for this day is actually January 9. What was the specific uh, uh, specific theme in that, uh, in that day? Because January 9, 1915 only, Mahatma Gandhiji arrived to India. Before that, Mahatma Gandhiji is a NRI citizen. NRI citizen, he had gone to work, uh, work in South Africa. There, he led the in South Africa, Mahatma Gandhiji led the Satyagraha movement against the racial discrimination practice, not for the freedom of the South Africa, against the racial discrimination practice called Upper Thied. In India, we have caste discrimination practices, religion discrimination practices, language discrimination practices, we have it, right? Region to region, there is caste-based discrimination is there, region-based discrimination is there, religion-based discrimination is there. Same as that in foreign countries, you will be having a racial discrimination based on the color of the skin. He is a black, he is a white. Based on that, they will be discriminated. So, against this practice, that the racial discrimination practice, which happened in South Africa is upper third practice. So, against this practice, Mahatma Gandhiji led a Satyagraha movement in South Africa before 1915. In 1915, only he entered to India. He participated in the India's freedom struggle. So, finally, that led to the uh, India's independence from the British rule in 1947. So, to honor Mahatma Gandhiji, from the year 2003 onwards, from the year 2003 onwards, we are celebrating Pravasi Bharatiya Divas Day and every year we are giving award for those Indians in foreign countries who have done many achievements, who have uh, contributed more to their country's economy as well as to the India's also. So, we are giving that award. So, this year, 17th, uh, uh, 17th Pravasi Bharatiya Divas Award is given. This award will be given by uh, uh, our President uh, Draupadi Murmu ma'am. Okay, right. President will be giving this award. So, Actually, this uh, this year, this award is given for 27 Indians living in uh, foreign countries. So, 10, 27 Indians living in overseas were chosen for this award. Who will choose this award? The jury team is uh, jury team comprises of chairman and vice chairman. It's 
chairman is our vice president of India, Jagdeep Sangar sir. And vice chairman is our external affairs minister, just Jay Shankar Prasad and some other members will be also uh, in this, uh, in that uh, jury team. They were only choosing those members for whom this award to be given. Okay, right. So, this year, 27 Indians living in overseas were uh, chosen for this award. This award ceremony will be held in Madhya Pradesh this year. Madhya Pradesh in Indo, this award ceremony will be held from January 8 to January 10. Right. This year's theme, what was the theme for this year is? This year's theme is Diaspora Reliable Partners for India's Progress in Amrit Kal. Amrit Kal, what is the Amrit Kal name is? It is a Vedic word. It means that it is the right time which has arrived for us. That is what the, uh, what is that meaning is. That is what the meaning is. Amrit Kal. So, actually last year 2022 we have celebrated the 75 years of India's independence. Amrit Kal, Amrit Mahal. So, we have celebrated 75 years of India's independence. Because 1947 we got independence. In 2002, that marks the 75 years of India's independence. So, after that, our government is taking many steps and uh, we are having a close relationship with uh, those Indians who are living in abroad who have done many achievements. Many achievements. So, this year's theme is also it's related to them. So, for India's development, it is the right time for the foreign people also to contribute it. So, that's what the theme is. So, theme is diaspora, reliable partners for India's progress. So, India's progress, the partnership with the diaspora those indians who are living in abroad so their contribution to the indian economy or india's development so that's what the theme is right okay so this year 27 percent this award is given uh, i am going to tell the two famous per, two famous persons to whom this award is given is guyana president guyana president actually a person of indian origin okay right uh, this award will be given for nra citizens as well as to the person of indian origin as well as to those institutions or the organizations for organizations also this award will be given that organization will be based on india but those people or those organizations this award will be given from 2015 from 2015 onwards that is from 2016 two years once this award is given this award ceremony is held so this year 27 percent were selected in that list guyana president is also there so that uh, guyana president is mohammed irfan ali he is a guyana president that means that a person of Indian origin is a president of the foreign country. So, uh, for him also, this award is given. Then one more important person is Sivakumar Natesan. Sivakumar Natesan. This person I have shown in the picture also. Sivakumar Natesan. Yeah, he is the person. Right. For him also, this award is given. He is a famous personality in Sri Lanka who runs a daily newspaper called Veera Kesari. So, for him also, this award is given. So, totally... 27 persons this award is given right 2023 okay so that's all hot news is over then we are going to see the national affairs national news second news smart program to boost scientific research in healthcare through ayurveda colleges and hospitals actually our government government in partnership with national commission for india system of medicine and central council for research in ayurvedic sciences they have partnered to announce a program, they have partnered to launch a program called Smart Program. The full form of the Smart Program is Scope for Mainstreaming Ayurvedic Research and Teaching Professionals. So, that pro what is that program is? In Ayurvedic colleges and hospitals, there must be research with related to the primary healthcare facilities. That's what the research is. To encourage research activities in Ayurvedic colleges and hospitals related to the healthcare, this program is started. That program is called Smart Program. Right. So, that is what the news is. Then third news. Government of India is proposing the ban on promotion of online betting on the social media. Yes. Our government has banned online betting, not online games. Online betting they have banned. Because uh, in relation to the IT, IT Act 2000, 2000, our government in 2021 have created a rules, have formulated a rules called Information Technology Rules 2021. That rules this year they have revised it. They have revisioned it, they have amended it. In that amendment, what they have to, uh, told is they are going to ban the online betting in social media. We know there are many online games in social media, but Supreme Court and government are told that those games are skill based games so that they were not banning the online games. But in most of the online games, the betting is done. Suppose India Pakistan match will be the match will be going on. So, who is going to win? So, some people will bet for India, some people will bet for uh, Pakistan. So, in that betting, many people have lost their money. And 
So many of them have attended suicide also. In uh, our state or uh, in India, the Rami game is very famous. So due to that, many people have attended suicide. They have lost the money also. So related to that, now our government has revised, revised the IT rules 2021. In that revised rule, they have told that they are going to ban the online betting. Online betting and the social media. Only the betting they have told they are going to ban it. Not the online games. Right. So in a draft change of IT rules, the government proposed. So in that rules also, the government told that to regulate all this uh, gaming industry, they are going to bring a self-regulatory organization also. They are planning to bring it. At the same time, they will not permit the online betting. Betting also they will not be permitted. That is what it included in those rules. Because that leads to financial loss and that leads to the addiction. More and more people have addicted to the online games. Right. Then user authentication. The user's details, the personal details also you shall shared with those apps, those games. So, due to this only, to protect the consumers, government have revised the rules and told that we are going to ban the online betting. That's what the news is. Then, fourth news. Okay, right. Supreme Court upheld the Modi government's 2016 decision to demonetization. Yes. Actually, our Modi government in 2016, they have banned the 500 and 1000 rupees notes. Right. Usually, if uh, anything related to the finance, if they are going to ban uh, 1000 rupees or 2000 rupees note, that must be done by, that must be announced by RBI, right? But instead in 2016, our Prime Minister, he had announced it. So, that raised many petitions in the Supreme Court. And uh, many cases were filed in the Supreme Court. Oh, the cases is that uh, prior uh, consultation is not done with the RBI. Government has, uh, in a hurry berry, they have, um, uh, they have uh, banned the 500 and 1000 rupees note. That's what the petition in this, uh, petition filed in the Supreme Court. From 2016, many petitions were filed. So, now the Supreme Court is giving the judgment. What judgment is that? The decision to ban the 500 and 1000 rupees note was not flawed. The decision making is done correct. After proper consultation with the RBA only, Prime Minister announced that 500 and 1000 rupees notes are going to be banned. It is not done in a hurry berry situation. That is what the judgment given by the Supreme Court now. So, we could not revise the 2016 judgment. To, we could not uh, revise the 2016 decision to demonetization uh, because the case is filed is that that demonetization is a flawed process. It is a for, uh, it is a flawed process. Many many Haribari uh, uh, actually government had done announced demonetization in a Haribari case. They have not uh, followed the many rules. Without following the rules, they have announced it. 500,000 rupees notes are going to ban. But uh, the motive behind that ban is they want to eliminate the corruption, they want to eliminate the black money, they want to stop terrorism. That's what the motive behind the demonetization. But but the prior to that announcement, suddenly they have uh, announced this uh, decision. So that lead to death of many people. Because suddenly many people will be uh, saving their uh, 500,000 rupees notes in uh, most of the people, they won't be saving it in the bank, right? They will be keeping uh, money in their home only. But suddenly government announced that 500,000 rupees are banned. Many people have attended suicide also. Right. So, that leads to case, uh, that leads to many petitions uh, filed in the Supreme Court. And Supreme Court now told that the government decision is correct. We could not revise, we could not stop the 2016 demonetization. That is correct. Actually, due process is followed. Correct rules are followed. After consultation with the RBI only, government have announced it. So, the court rejected the 58 petition. They re rejected the petition, challenging the demonetization and said that the decision making process of the government was not flawed. It is correct. Right? That's what this news is. Then fifth news. Prime Minister Modi to launch the world's longest river cruise, Ganga Vilas. Yes. World's longest ship which travels in the river was launched in India in Uttar Pradesh. Right? So, that was launched by our PM, Prime Minister Modi. That ship name is Ganga Vilas. This is what the ship name is. The picture is also shown to you. This, uh, from where to where this uh, ship will be traveling, right? This ship will be traveling from Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh to Dibrugarh in Assam. And while traveling, this ship will be going through 50 significant world heritage sites. The ship will be going through the Ganga River, both connecting India and Bangladesh. Right through the rivers of India and Bangladesh, the ship will be traveling, and during that traveling tra traveling period, uh, the ship will be going through many locations, including the World Heritage sites also. Right, that ship was launched by our Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Sir, that ship name is Ganga Vilas, world's longest river cruise. 
longest ship which travels in the river that was launched in India by our Prime Minister. Right? This is for the destination from Varanasi, Prayagraj to Dibrugat. The ship will be connecting it. Okay. Then 16 years now. India has taken over the leadership of the Asia Pacific Postal Union in January 2023. Yes, from January 2023, Asia Pacific Postal Union Secretary General will be Vinaya Prakash Singh. He was elected. Actually, the election was uh, conducted in August to September 2022. Now, results were announced. In that, Vinaya Prakash Singh, he was elected as the leader of the Asia Pacific Postal Union. Right? He was elected. Actually, this Asia Pacific uh, Postal Union, it comprises of 32 member countries, both from Asia and Pacific Ocean. So, uh, in Asian continent and from the Pacific Ocean related uh, countries, the, uh, from, uh, from those uh, countries, 32 member countries were included in this union. This union comes under the Department of UN also. It is a specific department under the United Nations, right? What, for, what is the purpose of having this union, Asia Pacific Postal Union? It is to promote cooperation in the field of Postal services to promote postal services between the two countries, between all those member countries in this Asia Pacific Union, this union was formed. So, in this union, uh, uh, Secretary General will be Vinaya Prakash Singh, he was elected. So, from January 2023, he will be the Secretary General, he will be holding the leadership position in the Asia Pacific Postal Union. His tenure will be, he will be holding that position for four years. Four years, he will be the Secretary General of Asia Pacific Postal Union. So, he is the Vinaya Prakash Singh. He is the person. Right. So, that is all. National affairs we have completed. Now, we are going to see the states in the news. States news we are going to see. Seventh news. Uttarakhand government has decided to abolish the revenue policing system in the state. Yes. Actually, before the freedom struggle, before India's independence, and after India's independence also, Many states, many states have revenue policing system. What is that revenue policing system? You will be calling it as patwaris. Revenue officials. In some of the districts, in some of the states, there won't be any police. The revenue officials will be doing the taking care of the law and order situation in that district. There won't be any police in the district. Revenue officials will be maintaining the law and order in that district. So, now Uttarakhand government, what they are telling is that we are going to ban this abolish this revenue policing system. So, from this, uh, from, from this, actually there is an incident which happens in the Uttarakhand. That is the Ankita Bandari murder case. The woman, the girl uh, whom you are seeing in the video, right? In the picture. He is Ankita Bandari. Actually, she is a receptionist in a resort in Uttarakhand. That uh, resort belongs to the BJP leader's son, Pulkit Arya. She was murdered because uh, uh, the resort owner has told to provide uh, some uh, special service to the VIP because she actually uh, actually rejected it. She does not admit that. So, due to that, they have uh, drowned, uh, drowned her in the water and that leads to the death of uh, death of Ankita Bandari. So, she was only 19 years. So, that led to many controversy in that state. So, while, uh, while uh, referring to that situation, that district does not come under the police also. There were no police in that district, revenue officials only taking care of the law and order situation in that district. So, after that incident, Uttara government have told that, okay, right, from this incident onwards, we will not be allowing any revenue policing in this state. So, we are abolishing it. So, in every district, law and order will be handled by the police. That is what they have told it, right. Okay, then 18 news. This news is related to which state? Goa. Greenfield International Airport at Goa's Mopa is named as Manohar International Airport. Actually, December 2022, December 2022, our Prime Minister Modi has inaugurated an airport at Goa in Mopa. Right? It is a Greenfield Airport. That is, uh, uh, without polluting the atmosphere, this airport was built. It is a green energy airport. It is an international airport which was inaugurated in December 2022 by our Prime Minister. Now, this airport's name, name was given as Manohar International Airport. So, it is named after former CM of Goa as well as former Defense Minister of Government of India, Manohar Parikar sir. He is Manohar Parikar. So, after his name only, this airport's name is also named. Manohar International Airport. 
this Goa's Mopa Airport is named as Manohar International Airport because Manohar Parikar has done many contribution for the development of the Goa state. So, for his contribution, this newly built international airport is named as Manohar International Airport. Right. 19 years. It is based on which state? Himachal Pradesh. Himachal Pradesh state news. Himachal Pradesh CM announced to set up of rupees 101 crore CM Sukhsharya Sahayata Kosh for the destitute. Yes. It was announced by Himachal Pradesh CM Sukhvinder Singh Sukhu whom you are seeing in the picture. He is Sukhvinder Singh Sukhu. Actually, he announced that we are going to under this scheme, CM Sukhsharya Sahayata Kosh, under this scheme, we are going to form a fund we are going to allocate rupees 101 crore fund for those destitute women and children in that state to pursue the higher education for the higher education this fund was formed right this fund was formed by the state cm himachal pradesh cm sukhvinder suku actually for this fund the state uh, mlas will be contributing their first month salary also right in the from this fund actually for the higher education to the destitute women and children this one will be utilized at the same time from this one pocket money will also be provided rupees 4000 rupees pocket money will be provided every month for those destitute women and children who want to pursue their higher education this was announced by himachal pradesh cm then 10th news octave 2023 festival to showcase the indigenous art and culture of northeast india yes octave 2023 festival was inaugurated by Tamil Nadu Governor R. N. Ravi sir, which is held, this festival is held in Tanjavur in Tamil Nadu. Actually, this, uh, what for this festival is uh, inaugurated by uh, Tam uh, Tamil Nadu Governor? This is to show the culture, art and culture of Northeast India. How they have changed, how they are in the development of the uh, India. How they are participating in the development of the India. As, as well as their art and culture will also be shown to every person in India. For that purpose, Octave 2023 festival is held in Tanjavu. That was inaugurated by Tamil Nadu Governor R. N. Dravi. It was not inaugurated by Tamil Nadu CM. It was inaugurated by Tamil Nadu Governor R. N. Dravi to showcase the art and culture of Northeast people. So, Northeast people dancers, Northeast people cultures. It will be showcased. It will be showcased in this festival. Right? To create awareness about the Northeast uh, uh, indigenous art and culture as well as their contribution to the India's development also, right. Then 11th news, West Bengal Chief Minister, this uh, news is about which state West Bengal. West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee launched a new campaign, Didi or Suraka Kavach. Actually, in April, in West Bengal, Panjayat elections are going to be held. So, ahead of this election, ahead of this election in West Bengal, there is a campaign launched by uh, uh, launched by West Bengal CM Mantha Banerjee ma'am that campaign is named as Didi uh, Didi or Surakka Kavach actually Mantha Banerjee ma'am they will be called as Didi in West Bengal right so her Didi or Surakka Kavach is launched this campaign is launched that Surakka Kavach what does that mean that meaning is to ensure safety for all safety for all that was the campaign's meaning so that campaign was launched that campaign will uh, campaign will be begin from 10th January ahead of the April uh, Panchayat, uh, Panchayat elections, right? That's what the campaign they have launched in West Bengal. Then told the news. Kerala Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan sir has inaugurated the Palm Leaf Manuscript Museum. Yes. In Kerala, Palm Leaf, uh, Palm Leaf Manuscript Museum was launched by the state CM. It is the world's first Palm Leaf Manuscript Museum because throughout the world we don't have any Palm Leaf Manuscript Museum. This is the first Pan, uh, palm leaf manuscript museum which was inaugurated which was promoted by kerala cm in kerala right the cost to build this uh, museum is rupees 3 crore 3 crore was allocated for building this museum this will be showcasing, uh, showcasing the various palm leaf manuscripts right the picture you are seeing it right because uh, kerala is the god's own country that's what they will be calling it as because previously many princely states have ruled uh, uh, many princes have ruled kerala and uh, most of the information will be written in the palm leaf. So, in order to preserve those palm leaf manuscripts, the state CM has launched the palm leaf manuscript museum also. So, throughout the well, if you see, there were no palm leaf manuscript museum. This is the first palm leaf manuscript museum that was inaugurated in India in Kerala by the 
Kerala CM Penrai Vijayan sir. Right? That's all. So, stays in the news is also over. Now, we are going to see the international affairs news. 13th news. China has appointed Queen Gang to be its new foreign minister. Yes. China has appointed Queen Gang as its new foreign minister. Previously, this Queen Gang, he is the ambassador to US. He is the Chinese ambassador to US. Now, he is being appointed as the foreign minister of China. So, uh, previous foreign minister of China is Wang He. Now, he replaces Wang He and now he is the new foreign minister of China. Right? Okay, then 14th news. India and Pakistan exchange a list of nuclear installations that cannot be attacked in the event of hostilities. Yes, from the year since two, uh, 1992, India and Pakistan are sharing the list of nuclear installations. So, what are the nuclear installations in their country and what were the number of uh, installation, nuclear installations in our country? We are exchanging the list. In the, at the same time, from 1992, we are also exchanging the list of prisoners. Pakistan prisoners in India and Indian prisoners in Pakistan, we are going, we are exchanging the list from since, since 1992, we are exchanging the list. This year also, we have exchanged the list. What is the need? What is the need in exchanging the list? Because uh, always there is a, there is a war-like situation between India and Pakistan, right? So, uh, because these uh, two countries are hostile from the independence. Since independence from 1947, these two countries are hostile, right? India and Pakistan are always in a warlike situation. So, if there is a war, actually, 96 way also we have the war, 971 also we have the war. But if there is a big scale war between India and Pakistan, these two countries should not attack each other's nuclear installation. For that purpose, we have to know why is the nuclear installation, right? For that purpose only, since 1992, these nuclear installation lists were shared between India and Pakistan. At the same time, with this exchange, with this exchange, prisoners list is also being exchanged and in this year, this year, this year, our India, Indian government has asked Pakistan to release, to release Indian civilian prisoners as well as missing defense people at, as well as fishermen and their boats. Indian government has asked Pakistan to release our missing defense people, civilian prisoners, those who have committed any civilian crimes, right? So, those people also release them, then Indian fishermen, those people also you release them and you also release their boats too. So, this were the recommendations given by Indian government to the Pakistan government, right? Okay. Then 15th news. 10th edition of Dhaka Literature Festival, the largest international literary festival held in Bangladesh. Yes. World's largest international literary festival is held in Bangladesh in Dhaka. Dhaka in uh, Bangla Academy. Bangla Academy in Dhaka is the place where largest international literary festival for the year 2023. It is held from the date January 5 to January 8. Actually, previous three years, this literature festival was not held due to the COVID-19 pandemic. After three years, after three years, now only they are again launching the largest international literary festival in Dhaka. It is a 10th edition, 10th time they are celebrating this festival. Then 16th news. Indian government identified two lithium mines and one copper mine in Argentina. Yes. Actually, uh, in the month of November 2022, Indian geologist team was sent by the Indian government to look for any lithium mines or copper mines in Argentina. So, November 2022, our government has sent a team of geologists, uh, ge a team of geologists to see if there is any copper mine or lithium mine in Argentina. Now, they have identified. Now, in Argentina, two lithium mines and copper mines are identified by our Indian geologists. It is very useful because India is moving towards, not only India, whole the world are moving towards electric vehicles, right? Because we don't want to increase the pollution as well as to control the global warming. More countries are switching towards the renewable energy sector. For the electric vehicles, that vehicle will run in battery, right? For the battery, we need lithium ion. So, we do not have any lithium deposits. So, for that purpose, we are going for, we are going to several countries. We are actually importing lithium, uh, lithium metal from other countries. And now, we have identified two lithium mines and one copper mine in Argentina. That is very useful for us because that helps us to boost our electric vehicle market in India. Okay. Okay, right. That is all. International affairs news, it is over. Now, we are going to see agreements or MOS news. Agreements news. Sounding the news. International Hockey Federation has signed a partnership with the JSW Group for the upcoming International Hockey Federation 
ஒடிஷா ஹாக்கி மென்ஸ் வேர்ல்ட் கப் டூ தௌசண்ட் டுவெண்டி த்ரீ எஸ் டூ தௌசண்ட் டுவெண்டி த்ரீ மென்ஸ் ஹாக்கி வேர்ல்ட் கப் இஸ் கோயிங் டு பி ஹெல்ட் இன் ஒடிஷா ஃப்ரம் ஜனவரி தேர்ட்டீன் டு ஜனவரி டுவெண்டி நைன் திஸ் மந்த் for this purpose international hockey federation has signed a partnership with jsw group because this jsw group promotes olympic and olympic training institutes in india so for that purpose in order to promote the hockey world cup also international hockey federation have signed the agreement with jsw group that's what the news is then books and all those news 18th news former ias officer authored a new book titled breaking barriers the story of a dalit chief secretary yes former ias officer and former chief sir retired chief secretary of andhra pradesh kaki madhavrao sir whom you are seeing in the picture kaki madhavrao sir he had released a book he had wrote a book based on his own experience because during retirement right after retirement before retirement he was the chief secretary of andhra pradesh so he has shares his experience in this book that book is titled the title of the book is breaking barriers the story of a dalit chief secretary because he belongs to a dalit community at the same time he entered into the civil service uh, uh, civil service and cracked uh, and he was posted as an ias officer and before retirement right prior to the retirement he was the chief secretary of andhra pradesh so based on his experience he had written his book titled breaking barrier the story of a dalit chief secretary he had written about many dynamics of civil services how the civil services is and what were the government policies and what were the and his knowledge about the governance so what was the difference in the policies framed with the government as well as in the governance of the government so based on this related to this he had uh, based on his own experience what he had experienced in andhra pradesh while he was chief secretary while he was a chief secretary he had written a book that book is titled breaking barrier the story of a dalit chief secretary right 19 the news shashi tharoor's latest book ambedkar a life was recently launched at the kitab kolkata even yes shashi tharoor shashi tharoor a congress member he had written a book titled ambedkar a life so before also there are many books based on ambedkar's life now shashi tharoor had written a new book actually his version of his view of ambedkar sir life titled ambedkar life so how a man from maher community in bombay presidency it is a lower caste community in bombay and how he had transformed to a law minister first law minister of india how he had transformed how he had been the drafting head of the indian constitution what was the journey journey of dr b r ambedkar so based on his view his thoughts he had written a book titled ambedkar life right how he was seeing uh, the ambedkar sir's life so based on his view he had written a new book that tells ambedkar story with grace lucidity insight and administration based on his view only right okay right books and other things we have completed now we are going to see banking economy or business news actually separate videos there for january first week banking awareness so in that some news is we will not be covered we would not be covered related to business or economy news we would not be covered that news we will be seeing in this topic right banking economic business news we can see it 20th news utkars 2.0 was launched by rbi governor shakti gandhi sir actually utkars 2.4 2.0 it is a plan it is a three year plan from the year 2023 to 25 it is a strategy plan how rbi should function indian banking system should function in this economic situation so how it should function it is a future plan for the year 2023 to 25 that plan that plan is named as utkas 2.0 that is launched by our rbi governor this year this month or uh, in january if there is utkas 2.0 then there must be utkas 1.0 or utkas right yes that utkas first strategy plan was launched for the year 2019 to 20 by uh, 20 uh, 2019 to 22 in july 2019 by rbi governor shakti gandhi sir in two, july 2019 rbi governor first started this utkas utkas strategy framework for the period 2019 22 how the banking system would perform from 2019 to 2022 that is over now how the indian banking system should perform from 2023 to 25 in this socio economic challenging situation because now there is inflation in the country foreign exchange reserve was slowing down foreign investors are pulling their money from indian market and going to the fed reserve going to america because their interest rate have increased the russia ukraine war is there so in these economic situations how the indian banking system should perform from year, from the year 2023 to 25 that plan that strategy framework 2.0 was released by our rbi governor shakti gandhi sir this month 
then 21st news the net profit of operating public sector enterprises jumped 50.87% to 2.49 lakh crore during uh, during financial year 2021-22 yes previous financial year 2021-22 our government enterprises government industries they made a 50% increase in the profit compared to the previous financial year for the financial year 2020-21 government industries public sector enterprises have made a profit around 1.65 lakh crore rupees but for the year 2021-22 public sector enterprises have made a profit 50% more that is 2.49 lakh crore rupees they have made a profit this is the largest contribution largest contribution of the public sector enterprises right in the there are many public sector industries are there right in that list in that list which five were the top industries who contribute uh, uh, which were the top industries top public sector enterprises who had made more profit in that list the first is the ongc this government enterprises have made the huge profit next place indian oil corporation after that power grid after that national thermal power corporation and sale these were the top five performers for the year 2021 22 right these five uh, government enterprises have made a huge profit and overall profit for the public sector enterprises compared to the financial year 2020 it jumped to 50 percent 50 percent extra they have made a profit see 2.49 lakh crore rupees they have made a profit in that list which government enterprises have topped the list is ONGC. This company, Oil and Natural Gas Corporation of India, this has made the huge profit in the among the public sector enterprises. Okay. Then 22nd news. Fifth volume of the Reserve Bank of India's history is released. Yes. Reserve Bank of India's history's fifth volume. This book is released by our RBI. Right. Actually, uh, in the year 2015, RBI have taken a decision. What decision they have taken is that we have to write the history of RBI. Actually, 10 years once, how the RBI had performed. That history, we must compile it in a single book. That, uh, for uh, writing that book, RBI have formed a committee headed by Dr. Narendra Dado, who is the former MP, as well as he is the chief economist and principal advisor to the Reserve Bank. He is the previous principal advisor and chief economist to the Reserve Bank based on Actually, RBI formed a team headed by, uh, formed a committee headed by Dr. Narendra Jadav sir to compile the, uh, to write about the RBI's history. How RBI is performing for the 10 months. 10 months they have written a history, right. In that, now they have released, RBI has released the fifth volume of the RBI history from the year 1997 to 2008. So, from the year 1997 to 2008, what have RBI had done? That, that information is written in this fifth volume. That book was now released by RBI this month. Okay. Then 23rd news. Axis Bank has partnered with Open to provide a digital current account journey for its customers. Yeah. This is the first time Axis Bank had partnered with a fintech company, financial technology company to launch a digital current account. Previously, many banks have launched the digital savings account now access bank launched the digital current account by partnering with a fintech company named open so current account it is be opening for the business people right small and medium scale entrepreneurs freelancers homepreneurs influencers so for those people if they want to avail any loan for the business they can avail it but now they can avail the loan digitally for that purpose our uh, access bank has tied up with open so, uh, if uh, if a person is, if a businessman is opening a digital current account, he will be getting 250 plus banking services, access bank services, as well as 50 percent cashback also. In uh, many services, cashback is also given for those customers, digital customers, right? Okay. 24th news. India has surpassed Japan in terms of auto sales last year to become the third largest auto market globally. Yes. Last year, 2022 year, India has surpassed, India has beaten, India has beat Japan to be the third largest automaker because in India more automobiles are sold every year, not automobile manufacturing. How much automobiles or cars are sold in the market? India, in that list, China tops the list. Third, it is Japan. Now, India had beaten Japan and India comes in the third list. This is what. So, India has surpassed Japan in terms of auto sales last year to become the third largest auto market globally. Then 25th news. 
Gold and Pipe Tech become the first online bond platform provider to receive a debt brokerage license from SEBI, Securities and Exchange Board of India. Now they have given a license for the online bond platform provider. Yes, Zeroda, Zero it is a brokerage company, stock brokerage company. That company is that company's tech company, digital company is Golden Pipe Technology. For this company, SEBI has given the license, a tripped brokerage license. It is the first online bond platform provider. Yes. This company, Golden Pipe Technology, is providing online bond and debentures. For this company, SEBI has now given the license. So, previously, SEBI haven't given any license to the online bond platform provider. Now, they have given the license to the online bond platform provider named Golden Pipe Technologies. That's all. Banking, economy of business news, we have covered it. Now, we are going to see the appointments and resignation news. 26th news. Folk singer Maidhali Thakur was appointed the state icon for Bihar by the election commission. Ahead of the elections in the Bihar, uh, Bihar state, uh, ahead of the Bihar state assembly election, election commission has decided to, to appoint a ambassador to appoint a state icon called Maidhali Thakur, who is a folk singer. She is Maidhali Thakur. Election commission has uh, had appointed her to create awareness among the people about the electoral process how we how you want to how do you vote what is the purpose behind the voting process how will you choose your future uh, ruling party so to create awareness about the electoral process this girl is chosen this folk singer maitri thakur is chosen as the bihar state icon by the election commission of india right through through this process this Maitri Thakur, she will create awareness about the electoral process. At the same time, her folk music, her folk songs will also be spread to more people in Bihar. Right? So, it is a give and take policy. Give and take policy. So, his, uh, her songs will also be get, uh, get published in all, uh, her songs will all be, will also be get known to every people in Bihar. At the same time, people will also be aware about the political situation or about the electoral process. So, for that purpose, to create awareness about the electoral process, Election Commission of India has appointed Maithili Thakur, who is a folk singer as a state icon. Then 27th news, Ajay Kumar Srivastava has been elevated as MD and CEO of Indian Overseas Bank. Yes, previously Ajay Kumar Srivastava sir is executive director in the same bank. Now, he was promoted as MD and CEO from January 1, 2023. Actually, in 1991, he joined the Allahabad Bank as a PO, Provisionary Officer. Now, see, after 30 years, he is the MD and CEO of a government bank. See, how a PO could become, me, become the MD of the bank. So, he is a best inspiration to all banking aspects. Okay? That's all. So, we have finished the appointments and resignation news also. Now, we are going to see the defense news. 28th news. Defense Ministry has started the process for the procurement of 100 more K-9 Vajra. Yes. Defense Ministry, they have started to procure 100 more K-9 Vajra, which is the self-propelled howitzer. That is self-propelled tank. They have, they have started to procure 100 more this self-propelled tank named K-9 Vajra from LNT, Lawson and Turbo, because this was built in India. This uh, self-propelled tank or houser is built in India by Lawson and Talbo using the technology shared from South Korea. For building this self-propelled houser, LNT gets the technology. Actually, LNT gets the technology sharing from South Korean defense company named Hanwha Defense. That's what the news is. Okay, right. Defense news over. Then awards and recognitions. 29th news. Odisha won the UN Habitats World Habitat Awards 2023 for Jaga Mission. Yes. Actually, uh, Jaga Mission. UN have launched a mission or uh, it is a 5T initiative of the state. Actually, Odisha government have launched an initiative called the Jaga Mission. It is uh, which is under the 5T initiative. What is that 5T initiative? Is teamwork technology, transparency, transformation and a time limit. So, in the state, based on this 5T initiative, Odisha government have created a mission 
for what purpose they have created a mission so in order to improve the upgrade the slum people it is for the land title and slum upgradation program so jaga mission is launched by the odisha government to improve the lives of the slum people and to give the land titles land to them for that purpose jaga government uh, for that purpose odisha government have started a jaga mission under their fight initiative fight initiative means if odisha government is starting to launch any plan they will be following this initiative they will be using technology in that they will be using teamwork in that they will be transparent in that transform in that then time limit will be allotted so based on this based on this fight initiative they have launched a mission jaga mission so this mission is to empower the or upgrade the lives of the slum dwellers as well as to provide the land titles land to them so for that purpose un habitats world habitat awards 2023 was announced so it was won by odisha so for that purpose so because odisha government have taken more steps to improve the lives of the slum people for that purpose un habitats world habitat award 2023 is given to the odisha right okay right then summits and conferences 30th news first g20 meeting will be held in puducherry on 31st january yes first g20 meeting because g20 2023 presidency is india it will be headed by india the uh, what does that mean is this year's g20 meetings theme what topic to discuss what to discuss where will the g20 meeting will be held this all will be announced by this all will be done by india they will be taking the decision all decisions will be taken by india what to discuss in the meeting what was the theme of the meeting why to held the meeting this will be uh, this will be done by india right this will be announced by india so based on that first because of this year g20 presidency is india so based on that first g20 meeting is held in india in puducherry so for this g20 meeting Puducherry Governor, Lieutenant Governor, Dr. Tamilisai Saujanajan ma'am have launched a logo, G20 logo. Because India is going to held this year's G20 presidency. This year's uh, G20 presidency is India. So, in this, first meeting is held in India in Puducherry. So, for that purpose, Puducherry Lieutenant Governor Tamilisai ma'am is launching a logo. Right, she is also thanking the uh, uh, Prime Minister. Because, uh, G20, because this year's full G20 presidency is India. So, India is going to select the place and what was the theme, India is going to select it. So, she thanks uh, Prime Minister Modi to give all the states opportunity. She thanks that all states must be given the opportunity to hold the presidency meeting, G20 presidency meetings. So, host the G20 presidency meeting, right? Then, ranks and reports, 31st news. According to a survey by Avtar, Chennai is India's top city for women's employment. So, a company named Avtar, it released a survey. In this survey, it has noted that Chennai is the India's top city for women's employment. So, there are many cities in India, right? In that city, which city is best for the women's employment? Actually, in which city women are more employed? Women are more working in that city. It is Chennai. Next, it is Pune. Next, it is Bangalore. Next, Hyderabad and Mumbai. These are the next cities for uh, women employment. So, best city, top city for women's employment in India is, it is Chennai. So, in Chennai, more and more people are willing to work. At the same time, more and more women are working in Chennai. That is, the, that is what the meaning is. Then, sports news. That is second. BCCA announced that Yo-Yo test and DEXA will be part of the selection criteria. Yes. This year, ICC World Cup 2023, it is to be held in India in the month of October and November. October 2023, November 2023, the ICC Cricket World Cup is going to be held. So, for that purpose, Indian cricket based selection will be done, right? For that selection, it will be done based on yo yo test and DEXA test. Selection criteria will be based on, so players will be selected based on this yo yo and DEXA test. What is that yo yo test? Yo yo test, uh, test is uh, the players have to run between the poles. That is that will also be included in the selection criteria. Uh, this is a DEXA test is it will be scanning of the players whether they are having any problems, health issues that they will be scanning it. So based uh, these two tests is also included in the selection criteria for the ICC Cricket World Cup 2023, which is to be held in India in the month of October and November 2023, right? Then 33rd news. That is also sports news. Australia's Belinda Clark has become the first female cricketer to have a statue cast in her honor. 
yes world's first female cricketer women cricketer whose statue statue was hosted by the government hosted by the country is belinda club she is an australian player who played from 1991 to 2005 right uh, during her period first cricketer to score she is also the first cricketer to score double century in women's cricket that is against denmark in 1997 she scored 229 in test cricket uh, in one day international not in test cricket in one day international she scored 229 against denmark in 1997 she is the best player one among the best players in australian women's cricket team so far her only australian government had announced the cast the statue that is it is the bronze culture statue she is also the former uh, former captain of australian uh, women's cricket team it is this statue is outside the sydney cricket ground she is the brain club so her statue is outside the sydney cricket ground actually it was a nice initiative taken by australia to honor the women cricketers right okay then 34th news odisha cm inaugurated one of the largest hockey stadiums in raukela previously also we have seen this news right actually uh, international hockey federation have partnered with jsw group jsw group to promote the men's hockey world cup which is to be held in this month january 13 to january 29 in odisha right so for that purpose odisha cm to inaugurate actually to launch to host the uh, international uh, men's hockey world cup in odisha odisha cm has inaugurated a hockey stadium one of the largest hockey stadium in india in raukela actually this uh, hockey stadium's name is name is birsa munda hockey stadium complex they have named their stadium as birsa munda hockey stadium complex with the cost of 261 crore odisha cm have constructed this hockey stadium yeah, same as that uh, odisha cm has also built a world cup village in odisha in raurkela he also built a world cup village which have around 225 rooms for the cricketers to uh, for the players to stay hockey players to stay not a cricket hockey players to stay right okay right sports news is over then schemes and committees 35th news Deen Dayal anti odia Yojana National Rural Livelihood Mission has launched the Prajwala Challenge. So, anti odia Yojana National Rural Livelihood Mission have launched the Prajwala Challenge. What is that challenge? This challenge is to invite ideas, solutions, actions that can transform rural development. Actually, this challenge is if you have any idea or initiative to transform the rural development or for the transformation of the rural development if you have any idea we can participate in this challenge prajwala challenge right anyone actually individual social enterprises startups private sector civil society community based organization academic institutions <coughs> incubation centers investors anyone can participate in this challenge and give their own idea or initiative or any actions to transform the rural rural people for the rural development if they are heavy having any new idea they can participate in this challenge and give their own idea right then 360 news scheme worth rupees 2500 crore for doordarshan and all india radio yes our government our government that is prasar bharati's broadcast infrastructure network the cabinet committee on economic affairs have approved a scheme cabinet committee on economic affairs simple you see, uh, you see it as uh, government our government has approved a scheme worth of rupees 2500 crore for doordarshan and all india radio yes under this scheme, under this scheme, our government has announced to give 8 lakh DD free DTH set-top boxes. Actually, they have planned to give 8 lakh set-top boxes with DD channel free. If you recharge or if you don't recharge also, DD channel will be there. So, for that purpose, 2500 crore were approved by the central government under this scheme. Right? Uh, this uh, set of boxes for, for to whom it will be delivered to whom it will be given it will be delivered to the people living in remote areas tribal areas left wing extremist areas that is naxal prone uh, naxal prone areas border areas aspirational disease to those people because these were all the rural areas right to those people tribal areas the people living in there our government has planned to give the free set of boxes 8 lakh free set of boxes 
with DD free. If you recharge or not recharge also, DD channel will be there to view. Right. Then 37th news. The second phase of the Sari festival, Virasat, begin from 3rd to 17th January 2023. Actually, Sari festival named Virasat, its second phase is held from January 3rd to 17th January in Delhi. Then there must be a first phase, right? First phase of the Sari festival, Virasat. It is held in 2022 from December 16 to 30. That was also inaugurated by our finance minister, right? In this festival, actually 75 hand woven saris, handloom industries, handloom industries will be portraying their hand woven saris in this festival, right? Actually, in the second phase of this uh, sari festival, Virasat, uh, around 90 participants have participated from different parts of the country, around 90 participants with their unique hand woven saris. Handloom to sorry, they have participated in this festival, right? In the first phase, around 70 participants were participated. So, do actually uh, this uh, initiative is part of the campaign. There was also a campaign launched by the uh, government of India under the common ha hashtag My Sari My Pride. Your hand woven sari, it is your sari, right? It is your pride. So, to showcase the best saris, best handloomed saris around the India. Our government has launched this festival called Virasat. So, it is the second phase of the festival is held from 3rd, uh, 3rd January to 17th January. In this, 90 participants have participated in the first phase, which is held from December 16 to 30, last month of the, the year 2022, right? That was also inaugurated by uh, Honorable Finance Minister uh, Nirmala Sitaraman, ma'am, and Honorable Minister of State Darshan Jardosh. In that uh, first phase of the festival, around 70 participants were participated, right? It is to support the Indian handloom weavers, to support the Indian handloom weavers and to showcase their saris, their designs around the India, right? This festival is, was inaugurated by a government of India, right? Then science and technology news, 38 news, Rushikonda beach in Vishagapatnam have become a danger to the beach visitors, yes. Actually, uh, there was a report submitted by ISRO, National Center for Earth Sciences and Andhra University. In that report, they have noted that Rushikonda Beach in Andhra Pradesh is been a danger to the beach visitors because many people who have visited that beach, they have drowned in the water and that lead to the 60% of the death in that beach. So, uh, many researchers have uh, just, uh, uh, many researchers thought that what is the reason behind this death? So, for that purpose, ISRO, Andhra University, National Center for Earth, uh, Earth Sciences have conducted a research and submitted a report and they have given the reason also. The reason is that it is due to the rip current. It is due to the rip current. Most of the people are drowning in that beach. What is that? Uh, what is rip current? Actually, rip current is once the water approaches the beach, then it will retreat to the ocean, right? During that retreat, during that retreating time, more force will be applied on the water. So, whoever in this uh, place, they will be drowned to the beach. They will be drowned in the ocean. So, that was the reason behind the death. It was given in that report submitted by Andhra University, ISRO and National Center for Space Science, uh, Earth Sciences. Right? This was the news. Then, important days, 39th news. Government of India sponsored the proposal for International Year of Millers 2023 at UN. Yes. Indian government has sponsored in the UN that 2023 year must be marked as the international year of millets. That proposal was submitted by the government of India and UN also accepted that proposal and announced that 2023 will be the international year of first year, international year of millets, millet crops to give importance to the millet crops as well as to make India as the global hub for millets. Our government has taken this initiative and submitted a proposal in UN to celebrate 23 as the international, 2023 as international year of millers and UN also gave the approval. Then last news of this week, it comes under the miscellaneous news heading, 40th news. One among the interesting news, see it. India's first underwater metro service in Kolkata to be completed by December 2023, yes. Underwater metro service, this will be completed in by two, December 2023 in Kolkata. Actually, in India, metro service first was first launched. Metro railway service was first launched in Kolkata in 1984. 
after that only it moved to metro services were provided to many states right many cities also metro services were provided but in kolkata in kolkata only they have planned to launch under water metro service that is under the water under the river they have planned to launch a metro service that is also is going to completed by this year within this year they are planning to complete it that under water metro service will be running through the hooghly river under the hooghly river this under water metro service will be constructed and it is to be completed by december 2023 this metro service will be connecting the twin cities howra and kolkata in west bengal right that's what the news is so finally we have completed the january first week 2023 general awareness quiz link is given in the description box once you have completed the video click the link in the description box attend the quiz and evaluate your performance that will definitely boost your score in the bank exam means right okay students if you like the initiative like the video if you haven't subscribed to the channel subscribe the channel share with your fellow friends or aspirants who are preparing for the bank exams okay students thank you